Hello, um, in this video we're going to talk about the workspace for the mockup section of Fabcooker. So, um, there are three different spaces. There is what we call the screen view, where you can see your screens, move the screen around, you can also rename the screen, you tap the name and then you can rename it. So this is the screen view, there is the preview, where you preview the work, and there is the editor. So to enter the editor, you have two choices. Whether you enter it from the screen view, you double tap on a screen, you get into the editor, or you can also enter the editor when you are entering to preview, you can hit this button over here, edit current screen. So if I do that, I'm going into the editor and I can edit that screen. The difference is when I go back, I will be in the preview section, so I can quickly make changes and stuff like that. It's really easy. So um, let's have a look at the edition section, the graphic editor inside uh, inside the AppCooker. So well, I'm going to create a new screen. It's going to be easier. I'm going to create a new screen. I'm going to explain you the the meaning of those, you know, of this interface. So we wanted to give AppCooker the ability to design um, any interface in both portrait and landscape at the same time because as Sir Ive said it one time there are no right or wrong way for holding an iPad. You users sometimes will be using in portrait or landscape and you have to you know sometimes find a way to you know change the layout of your application. So let's have a look at this interface. So at the bottom of the screen is what we call the property bar. This property bar has the tint option. So the tint option refers to a new class in iOS 7 that you know takes care about the interfaces. So for example I'm going to add some you know some stuff here and there so you can really see what I'm talking about about this you know the tint option. So when you are on the screen like that and you change the tint option. Oops, here it's not really working, so I'm just doing this. Um, when you change the tint option at the at the level of the screen, so note that I have nothing selected here. It's the default options, it's the general option, and I can change in a snap, just like that, all the colors of the UI elements that are that are here. If I want to change one UI element and set a different color, I can do that. But I have to select the object and then change the tint option. But uh, we're not going to do that, so I'm going to revert to nothing. When there is no tint, the default tint will be applied to the UI element. I hope this is clear. Uh, I can also change the background color. And as you can see, I can really, with this you know color palette, uh, do kind of a great work here to you know change and customize the look and feel of my UI element. I can also here in the portrait only here if I tap this it tells me select the canvas you want to use and right now it's portrait only or I can go to landscape only or I can go for both. If I choose both canvas what's going to do is app cooker when you play the markup and you hold your device in portrait it's going to display the portrait version of your screen and if you rotate to the landscape it will display the landscape version of your screen which is super handy our users love it you can also you see on this navigation bar here on the back button here I have a link area and it's like that because it's a smart back and we're going to see that in another video so just to show you that I can show or hide the link when I'm working on my on my mock-up which is pretty handy if I want to there is also the snapping option so right now I have this orange lines that helps me to put my you know my objects compared to other objects compared to the canvas it's super handy If I don't want this just go snapping up and if I want it back, I just go snap to guide, and that's it. Can also in this interface, I can show or hide the frame if I want, you know, to have cleaner view, or if I want to have this view like that. It's really simple, and I can add note here over there. So the note is 
something that is going to be attached to this particular screen in the app taster version of your app and in the PDF. So in the app taster, make sure if you want to share your note with your colleagues, friends, coworkers, clients, to have this set to yes. Do you want this note to be shared? And as you can see here, there are a little bit of uh, explanation about what it, what it means. So if I tap yes here, my note, my note will be shared. And that's that's it. You have nothing to do more. There is uh, there will be a little dot, a little you know something on the screen that will tell your the previewer, the the tester of you know the taster file that there is something to read and he's going to read it and he will be able instead of having this delete button here, he will have a comment button. So he will be able to read your comment, to read your note and make comment on it with a simple email. And in the PDF, the note, there is the screen on one page and the note on another page. It's a very lightweight PDF. We think it's the best option. It's simple and it works beautifully. So this is the note. And note that when a note is shared, this is green here. And if it's not shared, the button here is red. So it also reflects on the screen view. We're going to see that in a moment. Here is what we call the transformation bar. So at the bottom of the screen is the property bar and at the top of the screen is the transformation bar. And as you can see, every time I select an object, both the property bar and the transformation bar are showing me the options related to that object that I am selected. So for example, I have the navigation bar over there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is the navigation bar and I can change the style to black or default, make it translucent or solid. And I can also put it below status bar or not below status bar. This is the new behavior inside iOS 7. I can also change the back and turn, for example. So I can change the title. I can change the right button. So if I want to add a new button and I'm going there, and I'm going to select an icon, I'm going to select an image for that icon. And this is a great list of great icons. So for example, I'm going to put this list button and I can also enable a link on this particular, you know, button. Now I can select the target. It's super easy and it's super powerful. I think you're going to love it. If I want to, you know, I have my, my two buttons here, done and this list button. If I want to reorder them, it's really simple. I tap edit, I reorder them like that. And that's it, nothing, I have nothing more to do. So that's really, really cool. And I'm going to delete this one, just like you would expect it. And so we see the, the property bar, the transformation bar. Now let's have a very quick look at the top bar over there. So this is undo and redo. So I can, you see in the navigation bar, I can undo or redo what I've done. It's really powerful, really easy, just like you would expect. Here are all what we call, you know, the shapes, vector shapes and drawing tool and text tool. Uh, we are going to see that in, in other videos, so don't worry. There are image sources. You can choose between your iPad library, the Dropbox box and iTunes folder. Note that for the iTunes folder, this is the folder of AppCooker. It's kind of weird if you're not, uh, a, you know, uh, customized to the Apple way of doing things. Uh, they use the Apple, the AppCooker folder in iTunes. So you can see some images inside it. Personally, I don't use it very often, but you can use it. Now is the widget list. So note that one thing is really important. Here I have a, an iPhone mockup. If I use an iPad mockup, if I were, if, if I created an iPad mockup here in the widget list, I will have a line, a new line over there with three more options with the um, split view, uh, the, you know, three different other things. 
that are not used in the iPhone um, mockup. So we separated both so you're sure that you're going to use the right objects at the right place. So those are the widgets. Here you have the same widgets in a wireframe counterpart. So it's made in shades of gray. It's super neat. It's super clean. And I personally think this is the best widget, you know, wireframe library on the market right now. And here are some just images, rough images. So for example, I can put it there. Oops, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and uh, like that. So those are just, you know, small objects like that. Um, now, before I end this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to select objects. So there are two ways of selecting an object, actually three, but let's, let's have a look at them. I can tap an object and it will select the object. If I want to select another object, I can hold my finger on the first object I selected and then tap another one, tap another one to add to selection. And as you can see, I can add or remove to selection. And then all the objects that I have selected are going to move with me. I can also hold my finger on an empty area and start dragging this pink rectangle, this pink selection rectangle. And all the objects that are not locked will be selected. So how do I lock an object? Well, that's pretty simple. I use the transformation bar and here on the upper left corner I can lock the object. As you can see now it's in red. What it's going to do is when I select multiple objects at the same time, note that this is not selected. Okay, now how do I unselect it? How do I unlock it? I tap it, it's in red. I unlock it and then I can, it's good to go. I can, I can move it around. Uh, I can also do something that is pretty cool. I like that this function a lot. It's um, I select two objects. They are roughly the same size, so I can check the size here. So the segmented control is 250, and this is just a bit, yeah, maybe a bit more. I'm going to group those two objects together. I'm going to group them, and since they share the same width attribute, I can then move them around or resize them really easily. And to finish this overview of the graphic editor, <clears throat> this is the link. So there are four types of link and we're going to see them in another other video. Thank you and see you next time.